If you've been on this channel for like a second, then you already knew that I was gonna talk about this. Hola! Today we're gonna be looking at Huria Sensei's new manga, Tosho Inkai. And this title means something like the world of the library committee, because usually you spell it <clears throat> a little differently than they do, and the kai at the end, they actually spell it with the kanji for world. But that's just on the side. And this story is actually a collaboration with Iko Marina. I don't know anything about idols, but she was a member of AKB48. I only know them by name, but I know they're huge, or at least they used to be, I don't know about now. In any case, she said that she's a fan of Huria, so that must be so cool to work with somebody you admire or like. And it seems like she also cosplayed his characters before. And from what I read, she collaborated on the story and basically it's her own experience. And of course, there's no way for me to confirm whether or not that is really true, that the things that happen in this manga really happened to her, but so yeah, make of that what you will. But let's get into the plot for now. Imamura Kai is a student and she's just chilling on the rooftop at her school, just as you do in any manga. <laughs> she watches the other students just talk about whatever and thinks that they are so stupid for doing so, even thinking that it would be better to be dead than be like them. She looks at the sky wondering how to die. When she gets ready to leave again, a note falls out of her bag. It says to come to the library at 5 p.m. and she can be freed from her pain. Thinking that it's just a joke, she ignores it and falls asleep instead. And when she wakes up again, she does end up going to the library and it's already 5 p.m. And indeed, she is semi isekai into a cellar. And dude, when I first saw who was there, <laughs> I mean, look at them and you tell me. The members of the committee are Huria Sensei's older characters. Or rather, they obviously look like them, but they're not really supposed to be them. Like, they have different names and identities, but they still have some characteristics from their original stories. So they once again tell her that they want to free her from her pain and in return they want her story. And what this basically means is that they want to like write her book or her life. I think you know what this means. <laughs> and to basically finish her story that is yet untold. And while they do say that things could, you know, turn sour at any moment, depending on what they decide to do together, they like happy endings, so they're on her side for all we know. Imamura is skeptical, so they read her story to prove that they know her and know her pain. And this is where we learn what her pain even is. It might not come as a surprise, but it is bullying. And this started when she noticed that her friends and just people in class in general started ignoring her. Like even when she asked them things, they would just, you know, as if she was just air, just ignore her. And they also wouldn't answer her texts and nothing. So one day she goes to her friend's house to confront her directly. And all her friend says is just, oh, I'm sorry, but I can talk to you because this popular girl said so. But she still doesn't have any explanation why or what she did wrong. And at first she's obviously really upset about it and very sad. But instead of, you know, just transferring school or just being super let down by all this, she decides to just not care and ignore them back and just focus on herself. But when she talks to the council or the committee, I should say, it is revealed that the reason the popular girl even suggested ignoring her was because Imamura was better at dancing than her. Teenagers, right? Yeah, when a popular girl saw that Imamura doesn't seem bothered, they actively started bullying her with all the typical shit you can imagine. 
and even framing her for something so it seems that she was the bully and just, you know, dumb shit like that. So now Imamura thinks it's fine to accept the help of the committee and this is where they start making plans for the situation and for now it seems like each member has a chance to help. And my guess for now, I don't know how long this series is supposed to go on, but let's say if it's a one shot, then I can imagine that each chapter it's another member that, you know, goes to the world, to her real world and helps her in their own way and approach. I have no idea if that's the case, but it's just how it looks like for now. And yeah, for now I have a feeling that this is going to be a rather positive story. I mean, <laughs> it is Huria, so who knows? Anything can happen, but for now, it looks wholesome, I dare say. There are many references to literature, which is really cool. So if you don't know anything about Japanese literature, especially, then you might learn a thing or two. And I also like that in the story, books aren't just books, but tools to help you find some guidance in your life because before the committee compared her to a character of a novel by or a children's story of a very famous children's story by uh what the fuck is his name again Miyazawa Kenji I think but not only that, also that this whole thing is based on her own experience. I mean, the bullying part at least, I assume. And the fact that this um, personal experience, this bullying is handled in this art form is just nice. And it's like, you know, when you have a bad time and maybe you're unhappy where you are and you feel like you don't belong. So you kind of find refuge in art and, and, and literature and music and, you know, Imagining Ikoma-san like in, as a teenager or a kid reading his stories to maybe escape her reality and now she's quite literally saved by the characters that she grew up with. It's just... It's beautiful. And I think it's also relatable for many people. And it feels like kind of a story coming full circle, you know what I mean? And again, this manga could turn into something darker, but for now it doesn't really seem that way, but we'll see. <laughs> this manga also has Huria Sensei's typical sense of humor, and I personally just think he is really funny. At first, I wasn't sure what to think about this collaboration because, you know, Furia usually doesn't do that. He mostly writes his stories alone or is inspired by literature. So that's really different now. But honestly, I think I just couldn't dislike anything he does. And I enjoy the story so far and I really hope you do too. And also, I never talk about his art because I just love it. If you're a fan of his, you're gonna read this anyways. But if you don't know him, which I can't imagine, just check him out. This is kind of my first impression of the story. I can wait to read more and I don't know if somebody is already translating this, but if that is not the case, I don't think it's gonna stay that way for long. I mean, he's a very famous artist, so I wouldn't worry. But yeah, tell me if you plan on reading this or have checked it out already and tell me what you think about it. And this is not really a proper review, it's just a first impression sort of thing, kind of what I did before. I'll link the video here with a Furitsumore Kodoku no Shiyo. And I want to do this from time to time where I just review like the newest series that comes out and where I just read the first chapter. Just you know, so you know that this is out there and maybe just wait a little bit for a translation or look it up because these translators or like these scanlation groups, they are so fast. Oh my god, I'm I'm very surprised. Like the chapter, like when I read Chainsaw Man, I was so shocked that the day the chapter comes out in Japanese, people have already read it. <laughs> Like, it's on the same day, like, how do you even do that? But, all right. <laughs> but yeah, so I try to keep the fresh <laughs> on this channel. But that is where I'll end today's video. I will see you next week. And until then, have a good day. Bye-bye.